back with America Trends. Does President Trump, as Commander in Chief, have the right to declare a national emergency? We're talking to Barry Nussbaum of the American Truth Project. Barry says Trump has a valid reason to declare this national emergency. Barry, what, what do you say about that? Well, every national emergency declaration in the past, Amy, has entailed a um, federal expenditure of funds. The argument that's going to be made in the courts is that Congress already opined what the right number is. In other words, the $1.3 billion they put in the last funding bill. I think what the president's lawyers are going to argue is that the money the president is going to spend, which is up to $8 billion, so $6.7 billion from other sources, has already been appropriated uh, in different cases for national security, drug interdiction, discretionary funds that have never been spent, and so on. But so in other words, he's not pulling new money. He's reallocating existing funds. But he I has have, said, I'm sorry to interrupt there, but he has said that he talked to, to, to many generals in our military, and they said, do it. This is a better expenditure. This is a better resource for our money to take it and build this wall than what we had already appropriated it for. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's also an interesting point. And you can add to that analysis, Amy, the fact that what we spend as Americans on illegal infiltration of this country in education, in health care, in law enforcement, in treatment, and so on, is maybe 20 times or 30 times what the expenditure will be to keep these people out and force them to come through the doorway instead of climbing in through an open window or digging a tunnel under the wall, or in most cases, just walking across a non-border. That's why I really urge people who can get there, who really want to know, to stop believing talking points from the left or the right mm -hmm. and drive to Arizona or to Texas or to California east of San Ysidro. And you'll see in many places, and this is shocking, the border between the United States and Mexico could be infiltrated by a kindergartner or younger. <laughs> and in other words, there is no barrier. So all you people that lock your doors at night and lock your windows and lock your cars because you want to feel safe from people that you don't want taking your stuff or, God forbid, doing something to your family, this is the same thing. We're just locking the door to the country because you know what? When people come here, they earn the right. They don't get the right. They earn it, meaning it's a privilege to stay. And they have to do certain things or they can't come and be part of our culture. America is not and nor has ever been a place that you can break into and make it okay. I will never change my opinion, and I think you're right. You said it in the last segment. People that are in favor of open borders or no more walls, and they call them racist or whatever, are really saying, I just hope every one of these illegals comes in and votes in my party so my party gets more stuff for people that believe like I do. And I don't think, politically, that's the American system. But Barry, you did send me some numbers about the cost to Americans and state by state today. You, you told me, and, and these numbers blew my mind. Yeah, the, the cost is many, many times, Amy, what is being built on the wall. It's an extraordinary expenditure that each state spends on social services and policing because of the problems brought here. People bring diseases that we're not familiar with. People bring pregnancies to drop their babies here. People bring criminals in. They bring in crime. They commit crimes. Look, a couple weeks ago, uh, I believe it was the largest fentanyl bust in the history of the United States. There were over 100 million lethal doses. Can you imagine bad, if yeah. it got into drug distribution, how many deaths there would be? It was interdicted by ICE at the border, thank goodness, because if they didn't do their job, which is to protect our country at a border that's definable and should be protected, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands over the next year probably would have died. The fentanyl bust was enough to kill people in six states, they said, when it, when it came through. That, that stuff is deadly. Police have to wear gloves. If they touch it, they're going to be hospitalized. Uh, so, Barry, so much to touch on in that, but I've, I've only got, I've got under a minute with you, and I've got to, we've got to go over Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, new congresswoman from New York, and suddenly Amazon 
huge project that could have come to New York and created jobs and all kinds of good stuff. They're out of there because they don't like some of the policies. She was dancing in the streets and they were popping champagne that they oh. killed 25,000 high paying jobs, many of which would have paid New Yorkers over $100,000 a year, not to mention the billions that Amazon was going to invest in infrastructure. And the reason she killed it, there was a tax break, meaning out of all the money Amazon would have earned, they would have given a little bit less in taxes in exchange for spending billions in New York and employing 25,000 people. This is the beauty of socialism. She should be congratulated because now people know what she really thinks. And I hope they think about that next time there's an election. Do they really want this kind of economic insanity in their borough? I would hope the answer is no. She's in office six weeks and already lost that many jobs. Very special. <laughs> hey, Barry, um, American Truth Project, you come back soon and see us? I would love to. Anyone can check us out at findberry.com.